What's up guys, it's Jay Towns. Welcome back to my channel. In honor of Northwestern classes starting today, for the first time since I graduated, I thought I would share 10 things that I learned during my time at Northwestern University. Quick disclaimer before the video starts though, just because I had an experience doesn't mean you're going to have it, and anybody who's telling you that there is one right way to do something doesn't know what they're talking about because everybody has a different experience. So I hope you can gather something from my experience, but just know that your experience in Northwestern probably is gonna be different than mine, and that's okay. Number Number one, you can do anything you want to do. There are so many different ways to get involved on campus, whether it's developing your own work, working on somebody else's thing, doing something for class or an extracurricular activity. I've worked on everything from tech startups to theater productions, and I've never had a moment where I didn't know that there was something that I can do. And even if you don't see the thing that you want to do, you can even create it. I know a lot of friends that have developed startups and created their own clubs that are now up and running and students are joining it not knowing that it just started like a couple years ago, which is awesome to see. I would say if you're looking for something to do, ask your friends, ask your peer advisor, ask somebody about it and pretty soon I'm sure you're going to find a way to uh, talk to people who are involved or are interested in the same thing. Number two, you can't do everything you wanna do. Probably. So there's the caveat, right? There's so much to do on Northwestern's campus, you can get overwhelmed very easily. I know this, I know people who have done this. Honestly, most Northwestern students have probably felt this in some way. There are so many things grasping at your attention and at your time, it's really, really easy to burn out. I would honestly suggest starting slower, so being aware of what's going on, but not biting off more than you can chew. I think a lot of clubs, though good in intention, have a tendency to guilt people into staying and committing more time, even when you need to take time for yourself. So I'd be careful, especially as an underclassman, if you're just getting you know, your bearings, you don't really know where buildings are and, and what your class workload is going to be. I would suggest just chilling out, keeping an ear out, and joining things that you feel really passionate about and keeping other things off to the side until you're ready to, you know, try it out. I'm not saying you're gonna like everything you try, and I believe that you should feel completely comfortable quitting anything at any time if you don't wanna do it anymore. But, that being said, uh, it's really easy to burn out, so I just be careful and just know, you know, you can't do everything and that's okay. Enjoy the things that you can do and do well at them. Number three is, nobody knows what they're doing and that's pretty freeing. Especially as an underclassman, as an incoming transfer student or a freshman, everybody's trying to fit in while also figuring out what the hell is going on around you. And uh, nobody really knows what's going on. Even as an upperclassman, as I was reaching my junior and senior year, I started to realize, I was like, wait, so when I was a freshman and I was talking to a senior, this is what seniorship feels like? I don't feel any different. And the truth is, uh, not a lot changes. So I would just say, you know, Give people grace while they're figuring out who they are, what they want to do, because understand that chances are if you feel something, everybody else around you feels the same way. At the end of the day, everybody's trying to have the best college experience they can, so cut some slack where you can and give yourself the benefit of the doubt. Number four, the strength of weak ties cannot be more overstated. This has proved more true after I've graduated from Northwestern and seen this, but what am I talking about, right? The strength of weak ties is this concept that basically, you know, you might not be very close to everybody that you meet, but you can always leave a good impression on someone. And I firmly believe that whenever I possibly can, I want to make sure that I leave a good impression on someone because you never know how that relationship is going to develop in the future. Everybody's not going to be your best friend, but that's no excuse not to be friendly when you can. I think one of the most satisfying things that I've done since graduating is connecting people that I know that are interested or working on one thing with other people who have similar skills or things that they can use to help each other out and that's been really rewarding. It's always a great idea to expand your network whenever you can and make sure that throughout your time, you're staying in contact with people. People switch majors, people move. Some of your friends are gonna transfer to different schools but, but that doesn't mean they're not friends worth having because you just never know where things are gonna go. I'm still really close with a lot of my first friends that I made at Northwestern, even on the first day of school. And I've been catching up with people and seeing where they are now and what their lives are like, and that's been really rewarding for me. So yeah, stay in contact with people. You just never know. Number five, true friends will always support you. Now, this one is very important to me. This is one area in which I grew a lot during my time at Northwestern. So I'm an extrovert. I am a pretty friendly person. I hope most people would uh, be able to tell you, but 
Honestly, especially in my first couple of years at Northwestern, even though I felt like I was friendly with a lot of people, I didn't feel like I had that many friends. I didn't know for a while what the difference between a friendly acquaintance and a friend is. And I don't know if I can give the best explanation now, but in my experience, I can just tell when somebody is being genuinely interested, has my best interests in mind, and cares about me. And everybody's not gonna be that for you, and that's okay. But I think it's really important to have a support system of maybe not even people that you hang out with all the time, but you know when you reach out to them and you connect, it's gonna be a genuine connection, and you can really actually tell people how you're feeling. I know that for a while, in my uh, underclassmen years especially, I surrounded myself with people that I felt like I should be around, but not necessarily the people that I felt like I wanted to be. You know, it can be really easy to just join a friend group or hang out with the same people because it's easy, but it's another thing to make a genuine connection with the person. And it might not be with the person that you're expecting, but I always feel like having really true, genuine friends is always more important than being friendly with a group. Because as much as I just said, there's no harm in being friendly. At the end of the day, Friends and people who are supporting you truly are the people who are gonna anchor you while everything else around you changes. So I would definitely say, you know, stick to the real ones. It'll, uh, it'll pay itself forward, I'm sure. Number six, some people just don't wanna see you win. There are some people that it's like, no matter how kind you are or how helpful you are, they're just not gonna like you. And sometimes there's a reason and they won't tell you. And sometimes there's no reason that they can explain, right? I mean, I'm one of those kind of people where I'm like, if I hear there's a problem, I like to talk to a person directly and be like, hey, what's going on? I found that at least in my experience, a lot of the time it comes from an insecurity in another person, right? So if somebody's jealous of you for something that you got that they wanted, or they have something that they're holding against you that you don't know about. I mean, these are things that you can't always change and sometimes, it's better to release the idea that you need to be accepted by everybody in order to be accepted by the people who you really care about. Everybody has an opinion, and half the time that opinion's based on somebody else's opinion, and it's rarely about, you know, it's rarely about you or something that you actually did, right? I would just say if you find yourself in a place where there's somebody who just seems to not want to get along with you, I just combat it with being genuinely kind and supportive because that person might come around and you never know what they're going through at the end of the day. You're not gonna win them all and uh, sometimes giving negative people your energy just shouldn't be worth your time. It's all right, it's the way of the world uh, and it'll be okay, I promise. Because number seven, some people just wanna see you succeed. Just like anything, there's yin and yang, you know, there's always opposites. And just like some people are just negative for what it seems to be no reason, there are some people who will surprise you with how supportive they are. And they could be somebody who's really close to you or somebody you've only spoken to like once or twice. I know I've been really surprised by some supporters and mentors that I found that I never imagined would come from where they did, but they became some of my most trusted people on campus while I was there. I know that I personally benefited a lot from some of the mentorship programs at Northwestern. Uh, I'll link some of them below. I don't remember them off the top, but I know there's one that uh, really changed my life, which was the Affinity Mentorship Program, which is for people with like basically just marginalized identities of any kind. A lot of them graduated from Northwestern a while ago and are now living lives based on the things that they did at Northwestern. And I don't know, that definitely helped me because I didn't really know what I wanted to do graduating, but a lot of those people helped me out for sure. Another thing that I would not have known until graduating is that Northwestern generally just has a really great reputation everywhere. I mean, no matter where you go, you're going to find if you're wearing if you're wearing Northwestern gear, uh, some random white dude you're passing by on the street is going to look at you and be like, "Go Cats." Northwestern alumni are super supportive, and if they want anything, it's for Northwestern students to have the best experience possible. So, I, I would not be hesitant about reaching out to somebody in a certain industry or doing a certain job that you think you might like to do. Uh, 9 times out of 10, they'd love to talk to you about your experience and help you out. Number 8. This is something that I actually learned in an entrepreneurship class. And I just have to say for the record, the entrepreneurship program at Northwestern is amazing. I would highly suggest anybody to take any entrepreneurship classes, but especially if you are gonna be a freelancer, a free agent, representing your own brand. So I'm talking anybody working in TV, film, consulting. If you're gonna be an agent of any kind, like talent agent, real estate agent, whatever it is, when you're representing yourself, entrepreneurship classes are fantastic. Highly recommend. That being said, number eight is just ask. There are so many ways that we've all been ingrained in some way to believe that we don't deserve the things that we want. 
but I'm so glad that my professor, Heather Oranyi in the entrepreneurship department, she really challenged everybody in my uh, Entrepreneurship 225 Principles of Entrepreneurship to just ask for the things that you want. It doesn't mean that you're gonna get them, but more often than not, the person that you're asking for something is going to be engaged by the fact that somebody asked for what they wanted. And even though you might get a no, chances are you're going to get a no but or a Yes, however, what you really want is for that conversation to develop further and for that person that you're asking to know that you're interested not only in the outcome, but what goes into the decision being made, right? So you might not get that assignment extension or be cast in that show or get that internship, but that person's gonna know that you're a person that's not afraid to advocate for what they want. And when I'm telling you, that goes such a long way. I try to do it. I still forget sometimes, because we all get shy. And if you're, you know, especially I've found that people of color, women, other underrepresented groups, a lot of times don't feel comfortable expressing what they want and their needs. But out of all of the things on this list, probably this one has helped me the most. So if you come out of this with anything, uh, I would just say, you know, when you're on the fence about something that you want, just ask, because you just never know what you're gonna hear. Number nine, you will mess up. Just take accountability and move forward. Look, for a lot of people, college is the first time that they are able to take complete control over their own independence, over their decisions, and by proxy, what ends up happening because of those decisions. Now, a lot of students who went to boarding school or had other uh, instances in which they were able to exercise their own independence might be a little bit more comfortable with the college situation. But I know a lot of people who had to re-socialize, whether politically, socially, or otherwise, to college. And that's a more jarring change for some people than it is for others. I know for me personally, I graduated from a school of 39 graduating students in my senior year of high school, and then I joined a class of 2,000 students at Northwestern. So even though Northwestern is typically considered a small to mid-sized school, for me, it was the largest place I'd ever been, and that was kind of overwhelming at first. I would say, as much as you can, give people grace to figure out who they are and to make the mistakes that they do. Obviously, there are some mistakes that are egregious and need to be addressed appropriately and directly. But more often than not, a person's reaction to being called out is more important than the thing that they did at first. Because if that person is understanding that they hurt someone or that they did not understand uh, the ramifications of that action, they're gonna make sure that they don't do that again. Patterns are more important. And I would focus on this for yourself and for other people, right? I would say that I like to forgive people as much as I possibly can, but there were times that I felt, looking back, that I was taken advantage of, and I was always giving the benefit of the doubt, which is a noble thing, you know, but at a certain point, you gotta understand that you and everybody deserves a certain level of respect, and if you're not getting that from other people, uh, it's up to them to change, not you, but vice versa, right? If you are being addressed and somebody has told you something that made them feel a certain way, whether it was uncomfortable or confused, I believe that it's your responsibility to address that and to decide what that means for you moving forward. But I think that a big red flag is hearing information and not changing your behavior in any way. For example, I watched a lot of my white friends for the first time realize that racism doesn't mean you have to hate minorities, but can also manifest in microaggressions that they don't even notice. Some of those people took that in and changed their behavior. Others got really offended and said that there's no possible way I can be racist, you know? And that tells a little bit more about character. Well, another example that applies to me was I didn't know as a man how deeply rooted misogyny was in a lot of society that you don't notice. What I realized is that I never moved out of the way on a sidewalk when I'm walking past someone. Meanwhile, a lot of my female friends I found always are expected to move out of the way. And that's a really small one, but that manifests itself in a lot of other ways that can be really harmful. And so I tried my best to make sure that I was not contributing to any more of those problems after I learned about them. You're gonna find yourself in some situations where some things about yourself are brought to attention. And the way that you respond to that tells a lot more about you than the fact that it happened once. So I would highly suggest, you know, everybody makes mistakes, but the way that you address those mistakes really tells about your character. I would say that, you know, that it's more important to make sure to never make that mistake again, should you do so. And last but not least, Number 10, nothing lasts forever. Guys, it is so crazy to me still 
that I don't go to Northwestern anymore. I feel like I marched through the arch like yesterday, and now here I am living in Chicago, figuring out how to be an adult. Honestly, you know, it's so crazy. I even went to like the football game the other day. I uh, went up to Northwestern to hang out with my friend Sean on his birthday, and then we uh, went to the football game. And as a matter of fact, I met some of you there. It was really great to meet you, those that I did. And uh, those of you who I didn't, you know, maybe you'll see me around. Say hi if you do. I just cannot stress how much I learned, especially my senior year, the importance of just being present in whatever you're doing, right? You're not gonna love everything you do in school. It's school. Class sucks sometimes. Other times it's amazing, but really, your mindset going into something is truly what you're gonna get out of it. I wish at times I had paid attention more in my acting class specifically, as I just got off of an acting gig that uh, I saw some of my bad habits come out, and uh, I wasn't even surprised of where that came from, right? But my point is, college is a time to learn about yourself, to learn about others, and how you can contribute to the world as a whole. There's no shame in deciding to stay in a night that your friends are going out, or going out when other people wanna come in, or whatever you wanna do, right? But I would just encourage you, no matter what you do, do it 100%, you're gonna look back and cringe on some stuff. Because you're gonna grow older and be like, why did I do that? But it's really exciting, that's part of the process and I'm really glad that for the most part I was myself I was completely 100% myself while I was in college and I think that's what makes me into the person that I am today and I always try to be 100% myself no matter where I go so I would just say cherish the moments while you have them because they are fleeting and they are gonna go before you even know it at the end of the day everybody's Northwestern experience is different I'm so thankful for the one that I had and uh, I hope that you have an amazing time too. Please feel free to drop any questions you might have for me in the comments. And hey, even if I can't answer them, if you're watching this and you've currently been at Northwestern for a while or you graduated in my class or even before, uh, feel free to you know start a conversation in the comments about what your experience was like, what you might've changed or what you wish that you knew when you were at Northwestern or in college generally. Freshmen and transfers, I hope you all have a wonderful 22 to 23 season and uh, you know where to find me. See you in the next one.